Welcome everyone to a casted game for Stormgate. And today spawning in the northeast corner of that playing red, we've got Albino playing as the Vanguard faction. And his opponent in the southeast playing in blue, we've got Theory playing as the Celestial Armada. Welcome everyone to Lost Hope. That's the map for today. Hope you guys are having a great morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be in the world. We're going to be having a cracking game today. It's great to see the Celestial Armada back in action today up against the Vanguard. Now on Lost Hope, you do have four creep camps in the middle, which are essentially luminite resource points that's kind of interesting because of course we've got the vanguard faction that typically looks to get those quite early especially because it's opened up with the barracks so possibly expecting to get lancers here's the top bar ability zenith scan coming out there for the celestial armada just to get that little bit of extra vision about what his opponent is doing now he's also getting a second base expansion courtesy of the morph core which actually morphs into the collection array i say second base expansion it's more of the collection array which passively generates the Luminite, which can be bolstered by prisms, by the way. A, I guess a, a worker unit, but you can only get three prisms on a collection array to boost it up that way. Either way, there is an answer moving across on the map for the Vanguard faction. Look to get those creep camps. Now, there is a trick to doing this. The Lancers actually attack in a linear direction, in a linear way. And so you can see it's actually attacking three of the critters at the same time. Target the middle one, but it catches the one on the right side of the one behind it as well. With one foul swoop. There's now only two critters. Now we'll want to move the lancer. Yeah, it's going to move it there on the west side. So we'll be able to get both of the critters of one swipe of the sword. Takes the Luminite node very quickly. Gets a second lancer on the field as well just to get the others. And this is great for the Vanguard faction, right? Gets the Luminite trickling in nice and early. And you could potentially see a second base expansion early on because of it. I mean, it makes a lot of sense too because you can afford it quite quickly, right? Because of the Luminite coming on in. I will be kind of curious to see, though, how aggressive Albino decides to play this. Um, the Celestial Armada, a bit of a weird civilization or faction, I should say, for Stormgate. Of course, currently being figured out in many ways, has got three collection arrays. It takes a bit of time for the economy to, to scale because it scales in a slightly different way. It scales with uh, getting multiple nodes and prisms on top of it rather than just uh, maybe lesser of the command posts in a way, base expansions and then multiple workers on each one. So it's a bit of a different macro cycle on it. It's kind of interesting to think about, but I'm sure players will be coming up with some interesting strategies with this faction. It's going to get all four of the Illuminate nodes. It's something that actually the Celestial Armada find tricky to challenge, right? It's just tricky to get the units in early. You want the you want the collection rays oftentimes on a map like this. We'll be going for a second base expansion of the Vanguard as we typically expected. This is a weird building, pretty far out. Not actually walling up the ramp either. Kind of curious to place that there, but it will be the Biokinetics Lab, and we'll just see the scan coming out for Albino, uh, or scan on Albino by Theory, just to find out what he's up to. Quite a few Bastions opened here for Theory, and he's starting to mine the Therium as well. I'm kind of curious to see what he makes with the Bastion. It's a very versatile structure for the Celestial Armada. You can make most of the units, actually. Most of the, uh, yeah, the basic units. You can make the uh, the Argents, of course, the, the Vectors, you can even make sabers as well, the kind of higher um, tiered units. So kind of excited to see what he decides to make out of that. Probably going to be opening up vectors. I think it makes a lot of sense because we have seen a lot of plays for the hedgehogs for the vanguard and it'd be a nice counter to that. So he's going to get the scouting camp in the middle, which will be you know great for that bit of information. There's plenty of theory deposits in the middle too, as you can see. It looks like he's got, I believe, three bashers at the moment. Here, the Celestial Armada by Kinetics Lab is researching something. It's got to be Kinetic Redirection, right? It's a really strong upgrade for the Lancers. It makes the Lancers scale so well to the mid to late game. It makes them incredibly uh, tanky when they get hit. Well, I say tanky, not really, actually. It's, they're generally tanky anyway. But Kinetic Redirection, what it does, it adds on a 5% extra bonus on movement speed and attack speed whenever it gets hit, up to a maximum of 50%. Come on, Vectors. It does take out the Creep Camp using the top bar ability there, the Celestial Armada. It's called Evolution Catalyst. Takes out the creep camp and just uh, collects up with the with the vectors. Now with the vectors on the field, it looks like it's probably going to challenge those creep camps. And nice bit of use of the solar charge from that habitat just to speed up the research on the kinetic redirection for the biokinetics lab. It has added in a couple of argents as well, so go for that kind of uh, early early units just to try and get on top of those luminite nodes. Damage has been done, you know, you feel. I mean, it's got a lot of resources that way. Of course, he won't want to leave it unchallenged here, completely theory. Speaking about challenged, a couple of Lancers diving on in. This is a bit tricky, actually. The Vectors won't do all that well. Like, you can see how tanky these Lancers really are. So it's going to come down to the Argents firing off. And bear in mind, the energy is so critical for the Argents for the attack. 
We will take out one Lancer at least. Oh, gonna lose at least one or two of these Vectors. Two go down pretty quickly. May even lose a third. There's a lot of attacks coming out here for the Lancers. Oh, a bit of a pathing issue there for those Vectors. Does use the little uh, blink ability, I guess, the Delta Jump. To bring the uh, the weaker ones back home. So it was quite a bit of nice micro from Theory to try and keep them alive as long as possible. But it looks like he uh, is in a tough spot. And Lancer's getting some good value and... Two Argents tanking. Does have the Force Projector, by the way, behind this, which will be able to use the Restraint Protocol attack, which uh, reduces the movement speed of the enemies uh, and also decreases their attack. So it'll certainly help, but even with that, it's proving a bit tricky to deal with this. He does have Vegetacy on the Lancers, and there's only one remaining, so he will clear this up in the end, but he does lose another Vector, so good pick off there by Albino to snipe that. Nicely done. And dice to the Force Projector projectile there. And that's the last of the Lancers, at least the last of the Lancers that are in the base. Just deploys the arc ship in the middle just to prevent the direct access route from his enemy. And he has expanded now to a third base here, Albino, just to ramping up that economy. And the great thing about this with the Vanguard is with three bases now, they should be able to afford the highly mechanized units, right? The mech bay should be coming out soon. Probably expecting to see hedgehogs and maybe a couple of Vulcans or two. Which is a really bad situation for Theory and the uh, Celestial Armada. I gotta say, it feels like they struggle a lot against the Vulcan. Because of the fact the Vulcan can do really well against the... Um, really really well by the way against the vectors and you know a really good job against the Argents as well so it's going to come down to theory coming up and theorizing some uh counters or some options against it i wonder whether we'll see the saber it could be an option for them the saber is kind of an interesting unit it's a unit which has a uh, high damage 48 damage but it has a slow attack speed 2.5 now you might be wondering well, what does that even mean like to put it into context if you're going to compare it directly with a vulcan a vulcan has an attack damage of four but then an attack speed of 0.25. So overall works out to be, if you want to give it sort of the attack speed of 2.5 and you want to equalize it with the Vulcan, if the Vulcan wants to shoot as slow as the um, the Sabre, then it would do 40 damage, so a little bit less. But uh, of course there's no wind-up time, there's no delay on the Vulcan really on that. And so it makes the Vulcan, you know, very, very much a bit different type of mechanical unit than the Sabre. The bigger difference as well is the HP. The Vulcan has 400 HP, Saber only 250. Having said that, we talk about the difference in the way they, they play and the way they fight. Something that could be quite cool for the Saber. I've been theorizing, I've been cooking. So the Saber has a really nice, unique ability. And it's actually called the Mass Accelerator. What it does, it increases the movement speed of the Saber by 200% for 5 seconds. But if you attack with the Saber, then you lose the bonus. So you gotta use it or lose it sort of thing. As soon as you attack whilst you're using the Mass Accelerator, you go back to normal speed. So this could be used in two ways, right? You could either use it to move the Sabre into a fight really quickly, join a fight, or you could use it to get away from a fight. Now I'm kind of intrigued by the second way. Maybe with the high base damage you can do, 48 damage, get one hit off with a couple of Sabres, and then leg it out of there, basically run out of there with a the mass accelerator, and then maybe hit and run, do it again once or twice once it's gone on the cooldown. It's only got a 20 second cooldown as well, so it's pretty strong. It does take a bit of health away, but you've got another ability to recover that. So I think it'd be kind of nice to call to see that. Anyway, what we are going to see is a couple of Kree diving on that that worker line. And he's going to get a couple for sure. I mean, the Vulcans will take care of this in the end. But he's going to get a lot of workers out of this for sure. Kree, they gone to the invulnerable state. Do explode on a couple of workers. And he gets really good value. In fact, he gets great value. He took so many of them. Even with two Vulcans there. Jeez, the Kree did so much work there. Great to see, actually. Because it's something that I think in this match so far, Theory's got to do more of. He's got to take that worker count down. Because Albino has been on three bases for quite some time and he's been pumping out those bobs speaking about pumping out units well he's pumped out a lot of hedgehogs as well that's gonna be tricky for albino to deal with now to be fair the vectors do great against the hedgehogs what they do don't do great against is those uh those vulcans could be scary Cree jumping on in gonna get some damage out of them but yeah of course uh, i would love to see the saber i think we've seen a lot of the other units from the celestials i think the saber is kind of one that's been lacking and uh yeah i'm just kind of curious to see if theory's been theorizing with it we'll have to see what he's gonna be up to I think generally in the games we've seen so far in the Stormgate Frigate branch is the Celestials kind of dying off, right? They're not really typically going for their late game units, and I think Sabre could be a big part of it. Either way, talking about late game, and we may not get there because there's a lot of hedgehogs, although the Kree are going to get on top of it. We'll lose one hedgehog. Argent's on the back line firing off, and he's getting the energy replaced as well by the power banks, which is great for the Celestial Armada. Gets another couple of shots off, and the hedgehog's going to cycle around the north area. Going to try and block him off, though, with those Argents. But he's going to pick off a couple. Hedgehogs switch up location. They're just so fast on their feet, right? And, uh, man, he would love to have a couple of vectors here if he could. But it makes a lot of sense he's moved away from vectors because he did see a lot of Vulcans earlier on. So it makes a lot of sense. We did see the top Arbenzi coming in there. Sovereign's Watch, which abused the structure to be able to attack its enemies. 
Speaking of enemies, those hedgehogs are about to go down. I think he's going to lose the majority of these. And there, yeah, there's a silver as well. Picking off a couple of hedgehogs, at least a bit of HP from them anyway. Argents are chasing, but obviously a bit too slow. A couple of Kree coming in from the west side. I mean, there's a lot of Vulcans there now. Three of them, and it's going to be a bit tricky. There is a medtech as well. Could potentially use Nana Swarm to heal on one of these uh, mechanized users, but he does lose a medtech in the end. Kree jumping on top of that. And just as well, because this combination is looking scary. Vulcans, hedgehogs, medtechs. Heavily mechanized units from the Vanguard. We've seen it time and time again, and... Yeah, I wonder what the answer is going to be here for Theory. Maybe we'll have to try and get a couple of the Cabal, Anamansa, maybe a Sabre or two. I think certainly staying on the Argents is not going to be a long-term solution for this. Either way, I would like to say a very big thank you, by the way, for everyone who's been supporting the channel on Twitch or YouTube. You guys are absolute legends. I do actually have YouTube membership open now, so, I mean, look, guys, you don't really have to, but... If you, I just want you guys to enjoy the content, that's the main thing, but some people do want to go the extra mile to help me and support me as a content creator, so that option is open for you, and I do usually have a little ticker timer at the bottom. Obviously, we don't have any memberships on this channel, complete new, but you could be the first on that ticker timer. And uh, what I mean by ticker timer, essentially, it's kind of a newsreel of all the names that have all been supporting, so it's, it's obviously something I don't expect at all. I just want you guys to have fun with the games and the content and the casted games, because I'm, I'm pretty excited for Stormgate, especially where it's heading. Early access coming out pretty soon. I'm sure the player base is going to be pretty decent. Hopefully, anyway. Um, definitely looking like a great game at the moment. And it's only going to get better, right? There's quite a few prisms here for the Celestial Armada. I'd love to see this boosting up the collection arrays. The time on the game now, almost 12 minutes. And it's this sort of time where things start to heat up. Quite significant. Oh, wait, wait a minute. Definitely things are going to be heating up. Look at that. There's a Sabre on the field. We haven't seen this in a long time. And I'm super excited to see this one. Let's go. That's going to be awesome to see how it works. It's pretty slow, by the way, as you can see. So just as well, it has that mass accelerator um, ability. i tell you what's not slow, though. Are these Krees rolling around? He got a lot of worker damage earlier on. He might do some of the same. Although he targeted this one Bob, and that gives away his position, which is a bit rough, right? Uh, if he followed where the Bob was going on the left side, he might have picked up a lot more, because there's a there's a whole bunch of Bobs going on the west side to maybe get a, another base expansion. But Hedgehogs should be able to take out most of the Kree here. Well, they might be able to get through the tree line. Maybe now he's being blocked out by his own units. No, he will, he will go through with a couple... He splits off and makes the Hedgehogs kind of target this. The Hedgehog can't fit through there, I don't think, unfortunately. And he does go for that Luminite line in the northern part, but the west side is where he's expanding to. I wonder if Theory can get on top of that. If it could, it'd be pretty epic. The Hedgehogs should clear this up. Kree about to explode. He might get on top of that couple of the Hedgehogs, but it doesn't do too much damage, to be fair. A lot of them have got veterancy. Either way, down on the middle of the map now. Massive engagement. Plenty of Vulcans. A couple of Sabres get a couple of shots off. But he does back away a bit tentative there for Theory, just as well, because... That's a lot of Vulcans. They'll be, you know, just regrouping, looking to maybe get another batch of units together and push on once again. That's a lot of Sabres. And uh, there is an Animancer there. I'm pretty excited to see that unit. It's a spellcaster, as we know. I wonder if we'll see some Dark Prophecy unveil spells or not. He's starting to move further forward, and we hear the belly down. Atlas is they're getting ready to engage, potentially, here. Hedrog's getting the central location to get the extra vision. And a couple of Kree going north, and we'll get a couple of Bob Worker kills here, to be fair. So it's doing some eco damage, at least. And there's actually going to be a Kree moving to the primary base, but there's going to be a big engagement here soon on the right side. There it is. There's the Sabres. Dark Prophecy gets deployed, but the Vulcans jump jet out of the Dark Prophecy location. That's perfectly done, because that Dark Prophecy, that area, if you stay in there as the enemy, you can suffer some massive losses. The longer you stay in the Dark Prophecy area, the more damage you take. Vulcans, though, they're not done with this fight. They're charging on through, and the, uh, the Sabres are so slow to get out of there. He jumps just even closer. Nanoswarm comes out, does lose a couple of Volkers. The Dark Prophecy gets put on the ramp, so he won't want to really push through there, Albino. But uh, he's going to be in range with the Volkers, getting a lot of damage out of this. Atlas is some great shots behind this. And this is a big struggle for Theory. He's losing a lot. Nanoswarm healing up those mechanized units, and he's going to back away for now, Albino. But he's done a lot of damage, and Theory, he's going to go back away, down, back down the ramp and back to his base. He needs to regroup, recuperate, recover, reset, and re-go. I gotta say, overall, been super impressed by the micro, right? We saw the Vulcans getting outside the Dark Prophecy zone by the jump jets. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see a lot more of that. Atlas is deploy, Vulcans in front. There's another couple of static defenses here, Theory, so he might be okay. Animancer walking a bit further forward. Atlas doesn't quite land on it, but the uh, Animancer will go down now to the Vulcans. And there's a lot of Argents, but they're pretty squishy at this stage of the game, right? There's a couple of Sabres, but only a handful, and... He's taking the fight. I mean, those Vulcans on the back, there's just so many of them. Atlas is destroying those Argents. They go down in a blink of an eye almost. Does use the Purify ability to take out some of the bonuses or benefits that the Vulcans have, but it's just not looking to be enough. Atlas is getting some great shots once again, and he's going to be going back for now. I'll be, you know, looking to regroup, but he's done some damage for sure. 
He's opened up the area as well. It was a bit of a choke point earlier, which obviously favors what Theory's army is. Although, to be fair, actually, the uh, Atlases don't mind a choke point or two. Speaking of which, that's a lot of Atlases. And the thing is, I feel like Theory hasn't been able to expand on the west side as much as uh, Albino has, right? So his macro is probably struggling a little bit. And, um, yeah, it's going to be tricky to keep up with the unit numbers. And he did lose a lot of sabers earlier on. Now, I love the fact, the attention to detail there for Albino. He's actually got a lot of the solar charges on the habitats, boosting up production. Going to move on the west side now with a couple of Kree. Five of them. Looking to get some damage. And he might just, actually, there's no army here for Albino to defend this with. But Bob Overcharge could come out to help and repair and recuperate and... Bob's just going to run out of here, to be fair. And if he does have any, have any hedgehogs left, it could be a good time to send them here now. Looks like he's going to look to just take down the command post, potentially, here. Yeah, slowly working on it. I love the new animations, by the way. The command post does actually go on flames after a while. One Kree going to explode, but there's two repair on Manic sentry outposts, so you should be able to keep that. Repairing the Bob workers and alive. Here come the hedgehogs, and... I wonder if this leaves a bit of room here for Theory to move out down the middle. Um, once Albina moves a significant proportion of the army to move here to take care of this. Quite slow to move this army. Especially the Vulcans, of course. That's a lot of Atlases. That could come in clutch for Albina. I wonder if we will see some Evacs, actually. Some Evac Atlas Micro could be pretty cool. Hasn't had to rely on it just yet. Looks like he might be moving forward here, Theory. He's moving forward with the Argents on the front line, but the Sabres aren't here just yet. Kree jumping on in. Shields up, comes up on the Atlas, which is perfect. The Kree targets it, and he's absorbing so much of the damage output from the Celestial Armada. Because of it, Sabres do get their shot off. Dark Prophecy comes up as well. He does take out a lot of the Vanguard army. Lancers tacking in, and Dark Prophecy gets casted once again on top of the Lancers. Doing so much damage, but reinforcements are in with the Hedgehogs and the Sabres. They need to get out of there. Purifier does come up on a couple of the Argents to replenish the energy, but it's too little too late. Here comes the horde of the Vanguard army. Jump jets there with the Vulcans right on top of the Sabres. Sabres do manage to get out of there. He does use the Mass Accelerator to whiz on out of there to keep them alive. And just as well, because they would have gone down in a blink of an eye if he didn't. They may still do that because those Lancers, they are smelling blood. They, they're jumping on through. They do have kinetic redirection. Don't forget Sabres fighting off the back line, but it's not too much of a front line now for Theory. So it's got to be careful. But there's nowhere to run away from, right? He doesn't want to lose his base pos his position. He can't, really. It's a big part of his production capabilities. That's a lot of units still alive here for Albino, I've got to say. A lot of medtechs, a lot of Vulcans, a lot of Lancers. It's been a great game so far. Now, we are starting to see the Luminite nodes being mined out. That was the primary base that was mined out. Same as, for theory, all mined out. So he's definitely going to have to expand, and that possibly leaves Theory a little bit exposed, right? Because when he moves out, it's going to be a bit more tricky to get the army across the map, considering he's got sabers. Look how slow they go. But Albino is probably quite happy with the damage he's done, and he's hunkering down. Speaking of damage, I mean, those Kree, they're looking to do some damage. Moving on the west side, and could get some good value. Although, I think he's got some army here. He's got hedgehogs, yeah. He fooled him once, not going to fool him twice. Albino is ready for it. He got prepared and he's going to take down the creep pretty quickly with this. The Lance is more than enough to do with his Hedgehog's microing as well. Well, he might lose one Hedgehog potentially. No, he body blocks with the Lancer. That was crazy. I don't know if that was intentional. If it was, that was epic. The body blocking coming from that Lancer meant the creep didn't land on that weak Hedgehog. Keeps it alive. Moving down in the middle now with the Argent numbers, but... Yeah, this is the thing for the Celestial. I feel like they find it very difficult to move away from the Argents. And I'm not too sure what they scale to. Is it going to be Sabres? Maybe Cabal maybe adding in? But you know, Cabal are almost sort of like a support unit. It doesn't really feel like they've got a sort of a meaty unit. I guess the meaty unit is the Sabre, to be fair. But of course, we're in early access. I wonder if we're going to get new units. Probably like you will, right? Tier 3. Kind of curious to see what the Celestial Armada might get. Adamansa moving forward with the Argents. On the west side, one Kree getting some damage. Argent's pushing through now. He's going to try to duck at the bases which are still mining Luminite, right? So we will see a movement towards the left side of the map because that's where people are still mining from. Dark Prophecy gets deployed, so Albino moves on out of there. He's going to lose a couple of Bob Workers here for sure. Purify comes up on the Argent's to replenish the energy just to make sure those shots are really impactful. Wait a minute, Albino, he doesn't care about those Bob Workers. Sacrificing them, really. Maybe he's focusing on this fight here and just as well because he's winning it. Saber goes down. Vulcans jump jet through and takes out the remainder of the Argents. And it's looking a bit dicey here for Theory in terms of losing army. But he's doing some damage to the workers for Albina for sure. But maybe Albina doesn't mind if he's got this many bases. He's still mining after all. He's got to be a bit careful. I feel like Theory's won some good fights recently. He's been doing some damage and he might even take down this command post. 
The only concern is, is that those Argents are pretty trapped, right? Like, he could be cornered here. And it could be a high price to pay for getting that command post. Like, he's going to get it, but he might just lose everything here. Argent's going to start fighting with the Metex. Metex are tanking, really. Going to allow the jump jets through for the Vulcans right on top of the Argents. Nice play there. And he is cornered completely. There's no way to bail him out. Either way, he's going to push on the right side now with a lot of sabers, a lot of Argents. And they're going to do some damage here now. This could be a bit of an issue for Albino. Did he overcommit on the west side? Possibly. Plasma Confusion is on the floor and he's dishing out so much damage to those Argents. Okay, he's going to clear out all these Argents here with those Vulcans for sure. He'll take him out. These guys are, are goners for sure. And that just leaves a bit of a fight on the right side, right? Here it is. Sabres, though. They need to get out of there. Mass Accelerator does get deployed. But he does lose two on the retreat. And he just lost so much in the end. Didn't do too much structural damage. And Albino, he survived on both sides. And uh, the concern now for Theory is that those two armies, the army from the west and on the east for the Vanguard, grouped together, he might have a really strong push. Look how many Vulcans is coming in. That's just so much, right? And this is the thing about the Vanguard. This is what they do so well. They just make the value units. They they keep them alive to get as much value from them as they can. And then they scale to an army, which is just kind of huge, right? Digging in. That's what the Atlas say. They're going to get some siege damage out. They can take them to the structures. There's a scythe or two that can be pretty tanky in the airs. But it's going to need some more high damage output units for sure. Atlas is firing off. Lots of med techs. Lots of nano swarms. That's a lot of Vulcans too. They're kind of trapped in a way, but he might use the jump jet to try and get right to the front line potentially. Hair dogs on the ramp. They take it down the arc ship. This is huge. This is the push. There's the jump jets coming out from the Vulcans. They're diving on in. There's not much here remaining here for Theory. Just a couple of Argents, a couple of Sabres. The Sabres about to go down now. And I think he's going to lose his position. And if he does, that's probably going to be the GG. Albino taking the fight and he's winning it massively. There's just so much damage coming out from those Vulcans. It's too hard to deal with here for Theory. Doesn't have the counter unit really. A couple of Sabres were there, but they went down quickly and he's going to lose the structures as well. And there it is, Lenjum. GG gets scored. Theory, he taps out. A great game for Stormgate. And Albino takes the victory with the Vanguard on Lost Hope. Hope you guys enjoyed this Castle Cape on YouTube. If you did, make sure you give the video a thumbs up. Take care and see you next time.